All right, look, I don't even like doing mouse pad reviews anymore for reasons I'll get into in a different video, but the whole industry feels really repetitive to me right now. Nonetheless, I know you guys are gonna have a lot of questions about these, so here comes a lightning round of answers. Yes, I've seen the announcement for the GMMK Pro. Yes, of course I'm going to review it. No, I don't have one yet. No, I don't know when I'm going to. No, I don't have any comment about it until I have one in my hand. Yes, Gloria seems hell bent on coming for everyone's necks in 2020. Yes, I like that energy because at the end of the day, it benefits the consumer. Yes, one of their new mouse pads seems an awful lot like an artisan shit and Kai, which is exactly why we're taking a look at their new line of Elements mouse pads today. We're gonna look at them both with their PTFE feet and their ceramic feet as well. And no, I'm not going to comment at all on the Model O wireless yet. You ready? Let's go! Yo, I'm Brian P, you're watching Bad C Tech, and today we're checking out the new Elements line of mouse pads from Glorious PC Gaming Race. Full transparency, I haven't spent a lot of time with these. I've only had these in-house for a few days, and Glorious did send all these out for review, but as you should know by now, doesn't affect my review in any way. There are three new pads in the Elements lineup, Air, Ice, and Fire. All three come flat pack now, all three are only available in black, and all only come in their XL size, which is 17 by 15 inches, or roughly 432 by 381 millimeters. None of them are a cloth surface. They're all either hard or hybrid in some way, and they're all pretty fast. We're gonna start with the least interesting one and work our way up, and that happens to be the Air. Priced at $24.99, this is essentially a V2 of their Helios hard pad. The XL version of that Helios is 18 by 16. This one's 17 by 15. Pricing is identical to the XL sized Helios, which I think is a sneaky recent change because that XL size used to be $19.99. The main goal of the Air was to really improve the durability of the pad because that was one of the chief complaints about the original. The other complaint was the rate in which it destroyed mouse feet, which is a common complaint about hard pads in general. Now, obviously I can't speak for everyone or everywhere in the world, but replacement feet for mice these days are way cheaper, they're much easier to come by, and they're available for basically any mouse on the market right now. The days of paying ridiculous prices on eBay for hyperglides, are long gone. So it's 0.5 millimeters thick, still has the same reusable sticky silicone base where basically like adheres to your desk. I don't notice any meaningful performance difference between this and the Helios, which I mained for a long time. I had one stuck to the laminate top on my uplift desk for basically a year. It didn't permanently affect the desktop in any way. I think it's pretty ideal for high sensitivity players. It plays really fast, has a lot of control, not big on stopping power if that's still a thing you believe in. If it's hot or really humid, or if you're a heavy sweater, your arm or your palm may stick to it. I do do recommend a sleeve. It also has to be perfectly clean. You get so much as a crumb on this thing and it feels like something is really wrong. It's also really loud if you're a player that picks your mouse up and sets it down a lot because you're essentially just banging your mouse right on your desktop. Between their PTFE G skates or their ceramic feet, the G floats, the ceramic floats are actually slower on this pad, which is fine because the ceramic feet take an already loud pad and make it crazy loud. Not much more to say about it. I have an in-depth review of the Helios on the channel. It's probably a really embarrassing watch by now where I did my best Macho Man impression throughout the entire thing. Nonetheless, it's linked down in the description. All right, next up is the Fire. Priced at $34.99 US, this is their hybrid speed control pad. This is exactly the same surface as the Fnatic Dash. Not similar, identical. Same surface, same backing. Same stitching as well, which I point out because this is the stitched edge for people that hate stitched edges on their mouse pad. It's really tight. It's really consistent. It's really low. So I personally don't even know it's there. The only difference is the thickness. Gloria states the thickness of this pad at four millimeters. It's not. It's 3.5. The dash actually is a full four millimeters. When you hold the two of them in hand side by side, you can feel the difference. Squish level on this thing is firm. The large version of the dash is a touch wider than this, and it's five bucks more expensive. They also make the dash in a massive desk mat size version as well. I feel like it's a solid surface. It's water resistant. It's durable. X and Y are really uniform. It's not affected by humidity, which is really easy to test since I moved to the Pacific Northwest. It does a good job of staying in place on the desk. As far as gameplay, I stated in the original dash review that it didn't really work very well for me. I'm a Modern Warfare player, 400 DPI, usually use an in-game sensitivity of nine. 
These days I play at around 15. I didn't have as many issues with the pad this time around. I actually played back and forth between this one and the dash just to see if it felt any different in game at all. It doesn't, I like it all right. They do warn you not to crease this surface back over on itself. If you do, it does this, which is what my dash looks like now because it was stored incorrectly at some point. Otherwise, it appears to be pretty durable. And the ice, this is the one right here. Priced at $34.99 as well. This pad is going to draw a ton of comparisons to the Artisan Shinkai. At this 16 by 18 size, it falls right in between Artisan's large and XL sizes. Stated thickness on this one is four millimeters, but again, it measures 3.5. The surface here is glass glass infused. It has the same rubber backing as the fire pad. Same stitching as well. The squish level here again is firm. Basically the same on what you'd get with an Artisan mid. The backing differs from Artisan and for me, the ice has a better grip on the desktop than the Artisan mid does. The surface though is a little different. With the Shin Kai, it's like you have all these little tiny glass beads like sand. These come off over time. It's intentional and expected that you'll need to replace this pad often. You can literally feel this start to happen as soon as you pull it out of the box. With the ice, it feels more like a laminated surface surface, as if like a really thin sheet of plastic was heat pressed over a cloth surface. That's not exactly it, but that's what it feels like. The reason why I think it's not exactly it is because if it was, I feel like I'd be able to break that top surface if I applied enough pressure, which I was not able to do. Even using my thumbnail, I still could not get the top of this thing to crack. I tried, so no dice there either. It definitely feels like a layered thing because of the sparkle in it and the way it reflects light. It's like there's a depth to it. It also gets really dirty looking really fast, so keep a microfiber close by if you're concerned about that sort of thing. It's a really fast pad, easily the fastest of any of the ones we looked at today, and in my opinion is faster than a Shin and Kai. It also feels like it's going to be more durable. Now honestly, I can't say that for certain because I haven't logged enough hours. We could see that coating wear over time. I don't know, but I base that on two things. Number one, it just feels in hand like a more durable surface, and two, I don't think it's a big secret that durability has never been one of the selling points of the Shin and Kai. I actually prefer PTFE feet on this as opposed to ceramic. It's just balls out way too fast for me with the ceramic feet. So if you're looking for a feeling like literally slipping on glass or ice, get the floats in this pad. It's the fastest setup I've seen so far. In addition to all that, it's my hands down favorite of the bunch. Much as I hate to move away from a desk mat on my gaming setup, this thing is my new main pad, taking away the top spot from my very long running Aqua Control Plus. I'm cracked with this thing because despite it being super fast, it also has a lot of control. I don't understand it. I can't explain it. I don't even know why it's able to track because the surface feels totally smooth. X and Y are perfectly uniform. It's the first unique thing I've seen in a really long time. I'm gonna be super pissed if this turns out to just be another OEM because I've personally never seen anything like it. So there it is, the air is whatever. It's a polycarb hard surface. I still enjoy aspects of it, but I play a lot differently now than I did then. And a big part of the allure back then was the cheap price. The large was like $14.99 or something. So I'm less of a fan of this pad at $24.99. The fire, it is what it is. It's the Fanatic Dash. It's a hybrid cloth surface that falls to the speed side. For an artisan comparison, it feels like a faster Hayate Otsu. For me, it sacrifices too much control to be my main. It is super consistent, however, unaffected by temperature and humidity. Ceramic feet actually feel slower on the fire than the PTFE. But the ice, I love it. Again, it's really consistent. Ceramic feet are way faster than PTFE here. I personally like the PTFE better. So money where my mouth is time. Is this the Shitting Kai killer? Yeah, I think it is. The gameplay experience is really similar, but the value component really tips the scales. We're talking about $34.99 plus shipping. That's versus 5,400 yen or 51 US dollars, but the shipping will get you. I can't speak for everywhere in the world, but if you're gonna order one pad from Artisan to the US, you're gonna pay an additional 2,800 yen. That's a grand total of $79 USD to get a large or XL in mid, plus any international transaction fees on your payment method. Trust me, it's a price I've paid many times. It also takes about 11 to 12 days to get one of these from Japan to the West Coast when they are in stock and they're built from the ground up to not be durable. I can't think of a single reason to choose that over the ice except for the flex. As always, links to everything we talked about today down in the description. You won't have to wait too much longer on that Model O wireless vid, I promise. Any questions, hit me in the comments or come find me on Twitter. And that's it for this time. I'm Brian P. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, hit that sub button. And until next time, stay up. <laughs>